My dear students, in this video I'm going to give you an introduction to molecular modeling using a software program called Discovery Studio Pro. Many thanks to Dr. Doug Harris, a colleague of mine at our main campus, who supplied us legally with the software needed to be able to do this. So for this lab, once again, you're going to use this software program, which is called Discovery Studio Viewer Pro, which we've installed at our computer labs at our USU campuses. You should begin by finding this program wherever it's hidden on your desktop or computer in the computer lab and uh, clicking on it to open it up. It'll bring this weird thing up. You can click OK and ignore it. Here at our canvas, we'll begin by drawing some simple molecules. We do this by clicking the pencil tool over here and then clicking once. Now if you click once, it places an atom down. The atom that's laid down here by default is carbon. If you keep your pencil on the canvas, it will keep a line connected to that atom that you can use to draw a second atom. If you ever want to draw an atom that is not connected to the atoms that are already on the canvas, you have to move your pencil tool off of the canvas and then back onto it, and then you can draw a separate molecule like this. So this is kind of how it works. To select atoms, move your cursor over here and grab the uh, little arrow pointy tool, and then grab any and all molecules that you want. I'm going to go ahead and select these molecules and then delete them by pressing the delete key on my keyboard. To begin our exercise, we're going to start by drawing ethane. Go over here and grab your pencil tool, lay down a single carbon atom, and then another carbon atom. Then we'll drag the pencil tool off of the canvas. Now click your selection tool, and then click out here in the black space to deselect the entire molecule. If we click on this H icon right here, it will now show all of our hydrogens. To rotate this molecule around and get a better view of it, you can click this rotation tool right here. You can then left click here and drag and move this molecule around. To make this molecule larger and get a better view of it, click the black box right here. It will now expand and center the molecule in our viewfinder. You can see from this angle that the molecule is currently occupying a conformation that is staggered. Now, as we've learned in class, the staggered conformation is more energetically stable than the eclipse conformation. This software is going to help us actually obtain some empirical evidence, that is, data, to support that belief. What I'd like to do is grab our selection tool and select this entire molecule and then copy it by clicking Control C and then paste it by clicking out here in the black space and then hitting Control V on the keyboard. We'll now move this copied molecule over here. We now have two identical molecules. I'm going to center them by clicking the black box here and then we'll zoom in. What I'd like to do now is take one of these molecules and see if I can make it eclipsed. The way I do that is having my selection tool, this mouse here, chosen. I'm going to grab a single atom by clicking on it and then move that atom over so that it's right on top of the atom behind it. I'll now do the same with these other atoms in the front. And now this is, well, I'll adjust that a little bit. This looks like a, an eclipsed conformation. To see that a little bit better, we can grab the rotation tool over here to the left then grab the entire molecule and then rotate it. You can see that indeed this molecule right here, and I'm going to go ahead and I think drag it out a little bit more to separate it from the other one. This molecule over here does look uh, like it is eclipsed. So staring down the barrel, you can see that these hydrogens are stacked right on top of each other. Now let's see if we can get some actual numbers, that is measured energy levels for these molecules. I'll grab my selection tool and I'm going to only select the molecule to the left, the staggered one. I'll go ahead and click Modify, Driting Minimize. For this, I want to have zero iterations, a convergence criterion of 0.01, and all three of these boxes checked. Now if I click OK, it will now make sure that this is in the proper confirmation and calculate some numerical data for the energy level of this confirmation. How do I see those data? What I do is go to Window, New Data Table. This number right here is the relative energy level of the molecule we've selected, which is 18.8 .8 kilocalories. Go ahead and write that number down. We'll now minimize this window by clicking here and then maximize our other window. Now let's see if we can grab this molecule and get a relative energy level for it. For it, after selecting it, we'll go up here and go to Modify, Driting Minimize, and keep the same parameters. We now click OK. Then we go up and click Window, New Data Table. It now shows us the relative energy configuration for this confirmation, which is 24.2 kilocalories. As you can see, this confirmation, the eclipsed one, 
is at a higher relative energy level than the one here to the left, the staggered. What that means is that the eclipsed confirmation is less stable than the staggered confirmation as this software program is calculating. And that should make sense. 